Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about all the books that I've read this year and rank them from worst to the best. Let's get started. I'm not going to take credit for this idea because I saw another booktuber do it and I was like, that's literally genius. But I will link their original video down below. So far this year, I've read 42 books. I'm currently reading two books, but I'm not going to include those books because I haven't finished them. But I have an entire list of all the books I've read. We should get started because this might take a while. I literally look like a filter. Like, I don't know what it is today, but I'm just... <laughs> Holy shit, she's stunning. She's gorgeous. Oh my god, I'm literally obsessed with myself. Oh yeah, I'm just, it's just, just natural. Mm, yeah, it's like no big deal. Mm -hmm. I needed to talk to you and tell you a certain thing that I like just remembered a few like moments ago, just like a few minutes ago. And that is specifically that you are doing a great fucking job. And what I mean by that is that like you are doing exactly what you're meant to be doing you're not meant to be doing anything more or anything less baby you are doing great you might be sitting there and be thinking no no I'm like i'm like three years behind i have like a plan or whatever and i'm like behind the plan but sometimes the universe has different plans just because you're not fulfilling your own expectations just because you're not fulfilling other people's expectations of you doesn't mean you're not doing a great fucking job doesn't mean that you don't deserve to reward yourself for doing the great fucking work that you do. Doesn't mean that you can't be proud of yourself for getting yourself this fucking far. You've proved that it's fucking possible because you're fucking doing it. So pat yourself on the fucking back, bitch. Just gorgeous, beautiful. Just like bask in your glory and how fucking hard you work. Be proud. Be fucking proud of yourself because I'm fucking proud of you. I'm so fucking proud of you for working as hard as you work, for doing as much as you do. You're doing an amazing fucking job. An amazing job. If anybody says anything fucking different, I swear to fucking God, I will cut off their genitals. You think I won't? Try me. Try me. I will. Anyway, I'm really proud of you. I'm really happy that you're alive. I'm happy that you exist. And I think you're doing an amazing fucking job. And I think you should be proud of yourself as well. Anyway, love you. A few caveats, okay? I mainly followed my heart in deciding the ranking. I didn't go to my Goodreads and look up my star ratings. I didn't go to my wrap ups and look up at the order of those. No, I followed my heart. I just said, what do I feel? If a book isn't lower or higher than you want it to be, I'm so sorry. But at the same time, this is just my heart. <laughs> Speak it. Speaking. This is what your queen has declared. Don't, don't you dare question me, okay? Don't question me. Let's begin with the 42 books that I've read so far this year, ranked from worst to best, okay? Shall we? Okay, let's start. Let's start. I'm so excited. Number 42 is the worst book in my opinion that I've read so far this year and not one person is gonna be surprised by it. That is, in my dreams, I hold a knife. Bitch, I wish in my dreams I held a fucking knife so I could fucking murder this book again and again and again because I fucking hate it. In my dreams is like a whodunit mystery thriller with this girl named Jessica. <sighs> It's literally so boring, so mediocre, and quite honestly, quite dumb. Hated this book. I hated the characters. I hated their motivations because they made no sense. And the writing was like Monday fucking morning. And again, I'm gonna say it again. Who gives a flying fuck about Jessica? Who gives a flying single fuck about Jessica? No one, no one gives a fuck. Shut the fuck up, Jessica. Nobody asked you, okay? By the way, if your name is Jessica, I'm so sorry. 41, a little bit different, but not really, because <laughs> I still hated this book also, and that was For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. Wow, what trash. Thanks, I hate it. Samantha Downing was like, was like, how do I 
create uninteresting characters, uh, do the least amount of work writing wise, and uh, make a plot that is both meandering and kind of confusing. I know, I'll write for your own good. And it worked for her. It worked because the book, the book is giving mediocrity, okay? The book isn't giving anything at all. It's like, it's literally, ugh exhausting and like I said Samantha Downing's writing is skeletal it's not my favorite number 40 is a book I read this month <laughs> and I don't want to talk too much about it because I want to talk about it in my wrap-up but number 40 is ritualistic human sacrifice by C.V. Hunt this book is crazy when I started the book I was like I don't know if I like this I don't know if I'm into this. I don't I don't think I like this. And then the middle of the book, I was like, oh my God, maybe I do like this. Do I like this? I think I like this. And then at the end of the book, I was like, I fucking hate this. So two stars. I did not enjoy it, but I'm gonna talk more about my reasons in my wrap up. So watch out for that. Number 39, we have the book of cold cases by Simone St. James. It was boring. It was meandering and I didn't like it. I also didn't really care for like the mystery aspect. I thought honestly that like the twists and turns were less like twists or turns and more like roundabouts. Do you know what I mean? Like it wasn't, it wasn't suspicious. It wasn't suspenseful. I wasn't seduced. Zero out of 10. Number 38 is a book that I DNF'd and I didn't technically finish it, but I'm still counting it because I did read part of it. And that is Rhapsodic by Laura Th Thalassa. I could not finish this book because I just, I didn't honestly care. And like the world building was weird and off and I didn't, I didn't like it. No. 37, I have Goosebumps. I forget which one, it, The Mask. <laughs> reading this Goosebumps book and I think maybe reading any Goosebumps book for me is gonna be uncomfortable, meandering and like kind of boring because they're meant for children. I want, I want more. Do you know what I mean? To me, it feels like a throwaway. After that, number 36, I have Teach Me by Olivia Dade. This is a romance novel about a fat woman and she's like a teacher and she like falls in love with the teacher. This is so low just because it's like literally, it's like whatever. Imagine a romance novel. That's what you get when you read Teach Me. Number 35, we have Joplin's Ghost by Tanana Reeve This, I also did not read. I DNF'd it, but I read part of it. I read like half of it, so I'm counting it. This is difficult because it, this is very low, mostly because I didn't finish it and because I didn't really want to finish it. Not necessarily because I think it had bad writing, not because I think it had bad characters, not because I think it was just like badly executed novel. I don't think those things. I think it's so low simply because of my own personal like aversion to it for some reason. I don't think it's bad. I think it's good. I just don't think it was good for me in that moment. But anyway, who cares? Number 34, we have Smashed by Junji Ito. This book is a short story collection by Mr. Ito and it's, it's fine. This is the point where we start going from like don't like to it's fine. You know what I mean? Like like that very like lukewarm water feeling. It is like right on the cusp of me almost not liking it, but because of a few stories, I did actually kind of enjoy it like a little bit, but for the most part, it's just fine. Number 33, we have Spoiler Alert, also by Olivia Dade. This book is fine. Think of a romance novel right now. Just think of it, just ooh, oh, that's spoiler alert fat representation saves it a little bit for me personally, but it was just fine. 32, I have Every Morning the Way Home Gets Longer and Longer by Frederick Bachman. I liked this book, I did, but in comparison to all the other books underneath it, I don't, I didn't like it as much as these ones. So like while I like the book, while it like struck me in my heart and made me cry, I can't consider it lower on the list because the other things on the list I liked a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, 31, yeah, I struggled for a bit trying to decide if I wanted to have this one lower or higher than every morning, but I've decided that 31 should be, I want to hold Onokun so badly I could die. This is a horror romance manga. I thought it was good. I thought it was fine. 
Again, this section is just fine. It's fine, everything's fine. And from 30 to number 27, I have Spy Family. I read, I think, volume two to five during my Katie vlog, which I will link down below. I really, really liked this manga. I think it's really cute. I think it's really funny. I think it's really beautifully drawn. But again, do I like it more than the other things on this list? After that, I have The Mermaid, The Witch, and The Sea, which is a book that could have been, could have been at like the top, okay? It could have been like number fucking six, okay? But had it not been for the ending of the book, the ending of the book sucked so much balls. I really didn't like it. I really didn't like it. But the rest of the book was immaculate. But because the ending was so shit, I have to leave it at number 26. I have literally no other choice. Number 25, I have The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Barnes, is that who was by? This is a YA novel, a la Knives Out. It's very fun, it's very cute. I really like the main character. I really liked like her, her love interest slash like, you know, antagonist. I really liked the plot. It was fun, it was fun. Um, but nothing really that special in my opinion. Do you know what I mean? Why am I weird? Number 24, I have Dick Fight Island, volume two. This volume was a short story collection of like the other characters sort of like before and after the first volume. And it was very cute. It was very cute, very pornographic, but I liked, I loved. 23, and I know that Lonnie is probably gonna kill me. And I'm so sorry, Lonnie. I feel like I'm like Tyra Banks. Please gather all your belongings and leave immediately. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I feel like I'm like kicking these books out, but I, I had to put All the White Spaces by Holly Wilkes here. Something in my heart just told me to. It's my heart, it's my heart, okay? I'm so sorry. This is a novel about a trans man who goes on an expedition type thing with a bunch of other dudes to Antarctica after his brother dies. Brothers die. It's gorgeous. The writing was stunning. That there was something about the book that felt like it was missing to me and I, I genuinely don't know what it was. I read it this month, so I'm gonna talk more about it in my wrap up but that's just like my initial thoughts. Number 22 is another book that I've read this month and that is Murder at Pirate's Cove. I really, really liked this book, but similar to other books that I've talked about, there's something really that special about it. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I don't wanna be mean, I don't wanna be rude, but it's just, it's very much like a, it's like a cozy mystery. It's like Monday fucking morning. I mean, if anything, it's actually kind of like Thursday morning, but that's why it's kind of like in the middle. Number 21, we have the Worm and His Kings by Haley Piper. I literally live for Haley. Also, she just won a Bram Stoker Award. And it's, in my opinion, literally a crime that they didn't just give her every single one of those awards because like, who else, like who else are you gonna give it to, hmm? <laughs> who, who deserves it more? Please tell me, I'd love to know, I'm waiting. I'm waiting, exactly, you can't. Haley Piper was like, drink this Kool-Aid. I'd be like, Fuck yeah, Haley. <laughs> and then I would die because like, it'd be worth it in my opinion. Anyway, it's fine. <laughs> I'm weird, okay? I'm, I'm creepy, leave me alone. So The Worm and His Kings is about this woman um, who is homeless. She's looking for her girlfriend who's gone missing. And she kind of like goes into the tunnels of like, uh, I think New York City to look for her. And there's like this weird, this weird situation happening. The book is really fun, it's really creepy, um, and I really liked it, but the reason why it's sort of like in the middle is because there are other things on this list that I did enjoy more. Again, I'm not saying that it's bad, there's just other things beat it out. But anyway, number 20, we have The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. I kind of expected this to be a little bit higher. I surprised myself, to be honest, that it was so low. But when I think about it, I think about how it compares to our other books, and then also how it compares to other sort of like mystery, spooky thriller books I've read this month, and it kind of kind of falls short. So do I think The Paris Apartment is fun? Yes, 100%. But I say that it's like my favorite thriller of all time? In no way, no way. In 19, we have The Overnight Guest, which is like a thriller book about this girl who finds a child. It's like a whole thing. It's like a whole thing, it's like, Really, really fun. The like suspense is crazy. And the ending also is crazy. I really liked this book. Really, 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 really liked it. Um, it was very much like a quick read as well. So if you're interested in something that's like really fast paced and easy to get through, this could be it. 
I, th I think it'd be great at getting people out of a slump. And then at number 18, we have the Diviners by Libra Bray. Why did I say that word? Diviners. <laughs> this I read recently this month because Olivia requested it of me and I will link that vlog up above and down below in case you want to see it. I really enjoyed it. I really liked the plot. I liked sort of like uh, watching these characters kind of fumble with themselves because not only are they like in adolescence but they also have like massive amounts of trauma and then i also really like superpowers slash magical systems at play super fun super great number 17 is zenny i loved this book so much zenny in case you don't know is about this girl named zenny she has to go to like her hometown to go to like her aunt's funeral. Zenny has to like think about if she's gonna marry this like buff Scottish bi man who wants to be pegged. And then number 16, we have Addie LaRue. Don't question me on my placement. <laughs> I'm saying all these things and it all sounds crazy, but don't question it. Addie LaRue, I loved because I really liked Addie and I really liked Luke. The only issue I had with the book was Henry. Henry is boring and like not worth it. Do you know what I mean? Like if somebody was like, do you want to live eternally like immortality with like this hot demon daddy? Or do you want this like mortal guy who's just gonna like probably get you killed? I'd be like, why would you even give me that option? Like, that's so stupid. Give me this all. Like, I would rather have the hot demon guy. Like, duh. Everybody would. <sighs> anyway, that's my that's my daily Addie LaRue rant. <laughs> Number 15, we're getting so close to the top, is Ice Planet Barbarians. This is so far, like, down the list, like, close to, the, like, to, like, the best book because it surprised me so much. I had to give it credit for the seeding of expectations. Do you know what I mean? Um, I didn't expect it to be good. And then it was very, very good. And I liked it. It's like hot aliens with big dicks and girls who were just like, who were just like literally doted on. Like who wouldn't want that anyway? Number 14 is A Court of Thorn and Roses. Again, I have to give it points for exceeding my expectations. I wasn't expecting to be like just fucking balls to the wall. Is that gross? What does that even mean? loved this book. I don't want to say it's trash because it's not trash, kind of like a guilty pleasure kind of thing. <laughs> and I really liked it for that. So also hot fairy men don't even need to like, like say no more. I'm in, I'm there. Number 13 is Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. This is, <laughs> is a very sad book. But also like a lot of fun. In case you don't know, the book is following two men whose sons are killed in a hate crime type of situation. Both of these men are like, do you want to like go out and like kill the people who killed our children because they're gay? And they're like, yeah, let's do that. So they both literally just like team up to like get revenge. And it's such a good fucking book. And it's so heartwarming and terrifying and sad. The ending of the book. It literally still makes my heart just wrench. Anyway, I don't want to talk about it because it's like sad. I don't want to talk about it. Number 12, we have Finley Donovan is killing it. I love this book so much. I have to give it props for exceeding the expectation that I wasn't going to like it. Finley is just this like a fucking mess of a human being, which like, you know, relatable. We get it. <laughs> but at the same time, she's like so fucking like confident and strong and she just gets shit done kind of. Things go wrong, certainly. Antagonists were antagonizing, you know? The main character was main charactering and the love interests, great. The only thing I didn't like about it was the cop. If you read it, you know what I mean. Anyway, number 11 is a book that kind of had me in like a chokehold closer to the beginning of the year and it still kind of does. It does still kind of like live in my head rent free and that is The Maid. I understand why people wouldn't like this, but at the same time, I don't. I fucking loved this book so much. Molly is just a fucking sweetie pie pumpkin, okay? And I just want to protect her at all costs. Not only that, but like this book is like a wild ride. Like you wouldn't expect it to be like crazy because it kind of seems kind of cozy when you get into it. But then towards the middle, you're just like, what the fuck? What the fuck is going on? It's so good. If you haven't read it, please check it out. I think you would love it. If you don't, 
you didn't hear it from me. And then in the 10th position, we have House of Guy and Breath. And then in the ninth position, we have House of Earth and Blood. I was trying to decide last night which one I liked more. And I think I liked Earth and Blood just a teeny bit more. I loved both of them, but I think I liked Earth and Blood just like a teeny bit more. These books were great. These books are so fucking fun. Following around Bryce and Hunt and like getting to know them and watching their chemistry like evolve and like sitting in the tension of their like sexualities. <laughs> Stunning. And then also like the actual just like mysteries. The way that fucking Sky and Breath ended. <laughs> Sarah, loved them. They were great. They're so good. Number eight, I have The Appeal, which I read last month. By the way, I'm gonna link all of like the wrap ups where I talk about all of these books down below. I have The Appeal. I had to give it extra points in my opinion because it's my list. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Uh, I had to give it extra points for being so like enjoyable and like addictive because I finished it in like a day. I finished it so quickly. It's about this family that are like, our daughter, our granddaughter has cancer and everyone's like, no. But then there's like one or two people who are like, but does she? It's so much more complicated than that, but it's so fucking good. I loved the characters. I loved how sort of like tense and um, complicated everybody's relationship to everybody else was. You could see like the dynamics, so good. Not only that, but it's also told through the point of view of emails and text messages, which is super interesting. Number seven, Olivia Dade makes a comeback from the fucking, from the top of the list. She comes back at number seven with all the fucking feels. And let me tell you why. All the feels is something different, okay? You read spoiler alert, you read teach me, and you're like, yeah, that's fine. But then you read all the feels. There's something different about it. I don't, I don't know if it's the characters, chemistry. I don't know if it's like all of these like cute little plot moments. I don't know if it's like the slow burn of like enemies to friendship to lover. Like I don't know but I fucking loved it. Not only that but like the sex scenes were literally astronomical out of this world. Literally like tell me and show me anyone who can do better. Number six we have Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. Court of Thorn and Roses is at number 14 and Mist and Fury is six. What's crazy to me is like, I loved Court of Thorn and Roses, but like, I I can't even describe how I felt about Mist and Fury. It was so much better, but like, how do you, how do you improve upon the already improved? Like, how can you improve on perfection? The whole book is a wild ride. You meet a whole bunch of new characters. You fall in love with like almost all of them. And you watch Feyre like turn her sadness into rage. And it's stunning. Not only that, but she becomes like so much more powerful. Not only that also, but the bitch finally learns how to read. So congratulations, Feyre, you're literate. <laughs> love that for you. I loved the second book and I'm so excited to read the third book, which I haven't read yet, but I'm probably gonna read it closer to the end of the month, but I'm so excited. We only have five spots left. Coming in at number five is Beneath the Stairs. There's a child screaming outside. Bitch, you are in a fucking wagon. What do you have to complain about? Really, this child is like literally in a wagon, sobbing. You're being literally carried around. You don't have to do anything. You just have to sit there and like people just drive you around. Like, oh my God, get a job. <laughs> wait, okay, she stopped crying. She stopped crying. Oh wait, no, she's still crying. Neath the Stairs, read this last month as well. I loved it so much. I loved it so much. It's so good. Basically we're following this girl who gets a phone call from her high school, middle school best friend's parents. And they're like, hey, our daughter's in a coma. She, she tried to kill herself like in that house that you guys went into that's like haunted. And now she's like in a coma, but like before she went into the coma, she like said your name. So you're gonna need to come down here. So basically she goes down there. She starts to like investigate. We go back and forth between like the past of like their relationship like then versus now. And then also we learn about the history of the house. It's like creepy, it's fun, and it's very emotionally wrought. Give it a shot. Give it a try. The ending isn't some like big climactic thing. The ending is very much like 
more about the character's resolution rather than like the resolution of the house, but it's still, it's still really fucking good. I really fucking loved it. Number four is a book I just fucking finished and that is Cold Moon Over Babylon by Michael McDowell. This is technically a reread, but I loved it. The prize, who's surprised? Nobody is surprised. Like, of course, I'm Jordaline. I love Michael McDowell. Like, what else are you expecting me to say? This is about Margaret Larkin, who was literally murdered. Soon after her death, she comes back as a vengeful spirit to haunt the ever living fuck out of the person who killed her. So spooky. Um, the antagonist, like new levels of rage. I met new levels of just hatred. I hate, I hate the antagonist so much. Just makes it even more satisfying to see Margaret get her like revenge, you know what I mean? Get her like comeuppance. Writing is stunning. I'm gonna talk more about it in my wrap up, but like check it out if you haven't. It's so good. We did read it for my Patreon if you're interested. Oh, I also did like a reading vlog for uh, Cold Moon. So if you're interested in seeing that as well, check out my Patreon. Number three, we have Cat Diary by Junji Ito. <laughs> Cat Diary is this like short, uh, short story collection about Junji's uh, real life cats and his relationship with them. It's literally immaculate in my opinion. Like there's nothing quite better than than, than this little collection. Like it's short, it's sweet, and it's fucking hilarious. Not only that, but it also has some kind of like spooky, spooky moments. I very rarely sort of like laugh out loud when I'm reading something because you know, like laughing is kind of like a social thing. Um, but while I was reading Cat Diary, I just like chortled the entire fucking time. I loved it so much. It's so cute. And then I also cried at the end too. Don't judge me, but I literally cried. I want to reread it because it was so fucking fun. So fucking cute. Genuinely hilarious. And like, I know about hilarious stuff because like, hello, I'm literally so fucking funny, like all the time. So anyway, loved it. So good. If you have not checked it out, you need to check it out. Okay. Number two, <laughs> number two. I'm surprised I've gotten through this so quickly, but number two is not a surprise, I think, to anyone. I mean, I don't think either of these books are a surprise, but number two is Slewfoot by Brom. Like, duh, what the fuck else is it gonna be? Put off reading it in 2021 and in 2022. And when I finally fucking read it, which by the way, I read it in one day, in one sitting, so good. It exceeded like literally everything. I had an idea that I was gonna like the book, that I was gonna like think it was good, but I had no idea that I would like literally just become obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with this book. It's basically about this girl named Abatha. The year is is 19, or no, is 1666. And she lives in this like new settlement in Connecticut or whatever. It's basically her journey to female empowerment. I don't wanna be rude, but I'm surprised that a man wrote it because it's just surprising, but it's gorgeous. I would recommend checking out the physical copy either by like buying it, maybe like getting like an ebook or like going to your library just because there are like art uh, things in the book um, and it kind of it kind of enhances the experience. So much fucking fun. So good. So emotional and beautiful and like literally the last like 50 pages bonkers. Satisfying but bonkers. Read it. Number one. Number one. Do you know what it is? Like you have to know what it is. Like you have to. Let's say it together. Ready? One two, three, ninth house by Leobard, by Leader. I can't even say it. Who am I? Like literally, like, like just think about July, 2021. Think about me like a year ago, completely different person in terms of reading taste. Like who would have, I never would have been like, yeah, ninth house is gonna be my favorite book for a million fucking years. And yet here we are, bitch. We are here now. Ninth House is a dark uh, academia, fantasy, and like murder mystery novel. We're following this girl named Alex. She is part of this like secret society within her school that like kind of houses like witches and stuff. Alex has this like strange gift where she can see the ghosts or like what they call greys. Basically is trying to solve the mystery of like what happened to this one girl who was murdered. Very suspicious. Okay, 
Okay, I'm gonna talk more about this in my wrap up. And not only that, but like you can also see an entire vlog where I read the book because Olivia recommended it to me. Um, so I will link, again, I will link everything down below and up above. Just check out Ninth House, just check it out. I'm so excited for the second book. Alex is this bad bitch who doesn't give a single flying fuck. She doesn't fuck with misogyny. She doesn't fuck with people like trying to like pull her around or whatever. Um, and not only that, but she has like complicated backstory, like complicated past, a traumatic past. And I said this in my vlog and I'll say it again. I love women who are loud, who will say whatever the fuck they want, but are ultimately deeply haunted and traumatized. Like that's my kink. Read it. Okay, uh, thank you. I hope you pick up Ninth House, okay? You have to pick up Ninth House. If, if you if you're getting anything out of this video, it is to pick up Ninth House. My friends, my family, my familia, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books, if you agree with my placements. I know it's a little bit wibbly wobbly, but who cares? I really want to do this for other sort of categories, like me ranking like every horror book I've ever read or like ranking like the covers of things. I don't know. Let me know what you want to see because I would love to do something like this again. It's super fun. If you're here this far and you're still here, and I know you are, because I can see you. Um, leave me this emoji, okay? Just that emoji. Leave it for me, and I know. I know that you're here. You're here for me, and I'm here for you. Okay, love you. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit. We talk about creepy shit. We talk about Slewfoot and Ninth House and other things and shit. <laughs> what am I talking about? Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next one. Bye.